praise, glory, and honor most certainly due to the most high God of the patriarchs. Amen. I'm Isaac and Jacob, and peace to you in the name of Jesus. This is your brother, Elisha like Israel of the house of faith. I kind of truly a blessing. Um, and the topic is I'm dealing with still false doctrine that you find even amongst Hebrew Israelites, and that is the idea that there was no virgin birth. Okay? No virgin birth. You hear that quite a bit. But in order, to, in order, if you're going by what the Bible says, you can't. <laughs> It's really a, this is one of the, the most absurd doctrines in regards to if you're going to read the Bible, I don't understand how you, you know, you have to, you have to come with some other type of uh, explanation. You can't read the Bible and say there was no virgin birth. It says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Okay, so he didn't want to make her into a public example because you read about what happens to a woman uh, with the woman who was caught in adultery. In a public example, she could be stoned. Okay? So now, this is before they come together. Right? So he, he said he didn't want to make a public example. So he's just going to do it, you know, out of the public eye. So it says in verse 20, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So now what's conceived in her? Why would you be trying to put her away if she found a child, if, if it was yours? Right? right? You, this does not make sense. That's why I said this is one of the most absurd doctrines. We understand that his earthly lineage because you could chase, chase that's why he's called the son of David because Joseph Joseph was of the lineage of David we understand that his earthly lineage because you could chase, chase that's why he's called the son of David because Joseph Joseph was of the lineage of David we understand that his earthly lineage because you could chase, chase that's why he's called the son of David because Joseph Joseph was of the lineage of David I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Bahashem Racha HaKodash and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone also a sincere shalom to you other elders you Akim, your brethren, your few sisters and you followers of the truth and let me say mainly shalom to the elect. I want to go in this video here. This is um, a video titled, okay, Hebrew Israelite False Doctrine, Part 4, No Virgin Birth. Okay, so I'm going to try to hit the points real quick. It's a, I got quite a few articles. If you can stay focused, <laughs> um, I'll go into it and show you that the Hebrew Israelites, I mean, Salakia, this Hebrew Israelite who have adopted or kept the virgin birth uh, doctrine is no more than a heathen themselves okay um, we could clearly see that a lot of these Israelites who awaken to the fact that the Israelites are trying to keep Christianity going through um, false philosophy and through false doctrine okay so uh, first we must understand that the virgin birth um, that we speak of of so-called Jesus this happened before so-called Jesus right we say Yahweh this predates what was put in the Bible now you have to understand that the writers or the translators of the Bible had a form of ideology for um, coming out of the Roman Catholic which was Jake who used certain verses in the Bible to universalize uh, so like the word Gentile that was a universalized word because that word never really had to be there it could have been heathen or Greek and everybody think because you hear the word Greek it's talking about somebody white no not not true just like if you hear the word American you think everybody's white because they was American before America was established you had Native Americans okay just to get that point out so uh, I want to start f first off with uh, uh, Matthew 1 and 18 if I could get that Matthew 1 and 18 and uh, start off 
to get full understanding to show you that the doctrine that you see today of when you so-called shack up and um, you haven't so-called got married even though you had sex that people will shame you you know your old school mothers they don't do it now but they will shame you because you had you, you got a woman pregnant but you never follow through with the ceremony and this is where it comes from where, where it was you know this universalism okay um, let's go to Matthew 1 and uh, 1 and 18 first um, so let me get that quick real quick but first you must start at Matthew 1 and 1 but I'm going to jump to 18 just for scripture's sake okay so this is Matthew 1 and 18 now the birth of Yahweh was on the wise when, when as his mother Mary was espoused which you go to Deuteronomy 22 when it talks about espoused betrothed to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost so they saying this is the only time the Christians use come together with sex other than that it's not but anyway it says um, before they came together she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost and in other words the Christians will say they never even knew each other or they never was even together but she already had the child of the Holy Ghost right so we're going to go to that in the book of Matthew okay and it goes on to say we're going to look up this word before they was espoused before they came together that's G4904 Strong's G4905 Suner Chamai Suner Chamai means to come together to a symbol of conjugal cohabitation to go apart so they had different definitions so it means to come together to assemble when you look at the word assemble it means to bring together as in a particular place or for a particular purpose right to meet together to convene right it says to convene right so to cause to assemble pretty much it so um, we're just going to go through a few scriptures and then I'll get a few articles um, let's go to Matthew 123 real quick I want to show you something real quick it says um, behold a virgin shall be with child and she shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us so now to go back before those translations you got to go into the very old um, uh, ancient type of uh, books to get the true understanding or other translators that understood now when you go into this word virgin right it goes to parthenos which we'll get into that parthenogenes which is a Greek way of saying um uh, asexual but when you look into the um, definition okay I lost it when you go into the definition of virgin it says a virgin marriageable maiden a woman who has never had sex this is why so many different definitions according to one definition because it has to apply in a proper context but they'll put the first and second one is the most feasible answer the most legitimate let me say that uh, it says a woman who has never had sexual intercourse or man okay but marriageable maiden right that's what this word mean <clears throat> virgin Mary she was a marriageable maiden okay so she wasn't <clears throat> by the time she was conceived she was not no longer a so called virgin of the world you have different you have different uh, virgins right just like you have different Gentiles, right? It's, it goes different. So anyway, let's go to the Cloverdale Bible of 1535 predates the King James 1611. It says, Behold, a maidy shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, mean God with us, right? 
the Tinsdale Bible of 1526, Behold, a maidy shall bring forth child. So we get to that point. Now the Weymouth Testament, New Testament, brings it a little more uh, understandable. It says, Mark, the maiden will be with child and will give birth to a son. So that word shouldn't have been virgin technically. It should have been maiden. Okay? And a maiden is a young woman of marriageable age. That's all pretty much that is. Okay, let me go look this word up real quick. All it is is a young woman of marriageable age. It basically means just an unmarried girl or woman. Okay? Uh, or a young woman. That's all that pretty much means. Uh, okay? So, she didn't go through with the... Um, uh, ceremony and they would have wanted her to be you know have the ceremony or whatever so let's go to more proof uh, first let me get a couple of articles this is uh, the people article or whatever I'm going to just hit the point it says the original Hebrew text okay of Isaiah 7 and 14 is not about a virgin rather the Hebrew used to describe a woman in Isaiah 7 and 14, Amal, a word that means young woman. But then the Septuagint, right, with Septui, Septuagint really means seven, if I can remember. But the Septuagint, an early translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, took the Hebrew Amal and rendered it as the Greek Parthenos, which means virgin, right? So it was different definitions of the word virgin. Let's go here. Let me go to, I have so many scriptures lined up. Let me cut that out. Matthew 1 and 23. Okay. Let's go to John. No, let's go to Matthew. I'm going to go to Romans. Let's go to Romans 1 and 3. Concerning the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Yahweh, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. So you'll have these Christians and whoever try to uphold Mary. And this is what it's all about. When you're dealing with that, that's upholding the Queen of Heaven. That's all that's about. That's why they'll show the picture of the Virgin Mary holding the little baby Jesus. Showing the power and authority over Yahweh, you know. But that seed is talking about, we'll get into that too, Lord's willing. That's talking about um, um, his sperm, spermia. Okay? So let's go back to uh, uh, Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew 1 and see why, why I'm saying this before jumping to 18. I'm trying to make this quick. Matthew 1, the book of the generations of Jesus Christ the son of David, the son of Abraham. Well, why does it say Jesus Christ is the son of David and the son of Abraham? Right? Where's Mary? Although she was his, his biological mother, but which proves that it's the father and the seed, that the progenitor is just this society has softened you Christians up, man, and you Israelites. Right? So, let's go into this other text near eastern mythology the Assyrian and Babylonian concept of origins express procreation first in relationships between gods and goddesses resulting in other gods and goddesses such as Ea and Demikina okay as in giving birth to Marduk I, I'm not going to go into that but when you go here it says um, also known as uh, was an ancient Sumerian mother, this goes back to Semiramis, Ishtar, right? Goddess of the mountains and one of the seven great deities uh, of summer, she is principally a fertility goddess, right? So whenever you deal with the fertility goddess of the sun, this is why they call it word, they spell the word sun, this is why you go to church on Sunday after the uh, uh, S-U-N right instead of S-O-N that's why those sons um, when you look at the word sun 
they they pretty much that pretty much derived off the actual son. So this is why Semiramis said she had birth, she gave birth to uh, uh, Tammuz from the sun. And that's why they call this male a sun, after the sun. Okay, there's much history on that, but I ain't got time to go into that. I'm just trying to get this lesson cleared up. Okay. Um, let's go to this part. Um, it says Matthew 22. Now let's go to Acts real quick. Acts let me go to 3, let me go to uh, 22. And when, when he had moved him and raised up unto them David to be the king of whom all he gave testimony and said, I found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. And of this man's seed have God, according to how according to the promise, raised up unto Israel a savior, Jesus. Right? From this man's seed, Yahawashah. Okay, so let's go back here. Let me read one more of these uh, little articles. A virgin roll call might include Romulus and Remus, right? Romulus and Remus, Rome. Twin founders of Rome, before of the virgin Rhea Silva, in ancient Egypt, Ra, the son, they spell it S U N, was born of the virgin mother, Net Oris was the son of the virgin Isis. The Frigo Roman god Attis was born of a virgin Nana on December 25th. Now we all know December 25th, that was a, a month that they put in later. You had November, you had December. December November, December came in later because all the, uh, uh, the months was named after these gods. Like, uh, um, like uh, June, Juno, Jupiter, Julius Caesar, August, Augustus Caesar, you get the point. So you had, that was the winter, De December 24th, I think the 21st or 25th is the, uh, the winter solstice when the sun reaches its peak, so to speak, where it's brightest. So this is when they decided to put uh, uh, Semiramis, Shivia, and all these other gods, Ishtar, on these uh, solstices, right? So then they decide through this uh, universalism, through the uh, through these ideologies and practice, that on December twenty fifth, wait a minute, the son of uh, son of God Jesus. Why not put him on December twenty fifth, right? And this is why they say he was born on December twenty fifth. Same deal. This is how you know this is all false. It resonates because he went on to be killed and was resurrected. Right? Same thing. In ancient Greece, Dionysus was the son either of the virgin Semil or the virgin uh, Parisphone. Parisphone was also a virgin mother of Jason. And Plato's mother, uh, Perictinone, was a virgin. So, you get the point. So, let's go on to... Um, I'm going to try to get this last one. Uh, Mark... 22, Matthew 22 and 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, Yahawashah, asked them, saying, what ye think of Christ? Now, I believe there was a, a story where, in the scripture, where he did the same thing with Peter. And that's how Peter was raised, if, if I'm not mistaken. He asked them, he kept asking that question, because they all knew that well, he was the son of David. But then I believe Peter said, well, you're the son of the Most High. And he said, ah, that's who, uh, that's my point, right? It says, while the Pharisees was gathered together, Jesus, Yahweh shall ask them, saying, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, how then doth David in the spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit on thy right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool, which you can read that also in the book of Psalms. Okay, so and and if David then call him Lord, how is he his son? So if David ultimately call his son Solomon Lord, then how can he be his Lord? Because how can a father call a son Lord? Because the father is normally the leader. 
this proves that this is uh, definitely a def uh, uh, thing of reincarnation that Solomon had to be the one you call Jesus which makes sense Yahweh right and he would have to call him Lord because Yahweh is over David right and no man was able to answer him a word neither does any man from that day forth ask any more questions hope this lesson was edifying that's all I have on that Shalom